In this video, we are going to be quickly going through my favorite history books, Catholic history books, some of the ones that I've read and I've really enjoyed and I want to share with you because people ask me all the time, what are the best books on love and relationships? Oh, we have a video on it. What are the best books on learning your faith? How to come to know God more? How do you, where do you start out? Oh, we have a video on it. What if you want to defend your faith and really know the apologetics arguments? Oh, we have videos on it. So check out our videos if you didn't know already. This one's going to be on history books, but check out our other videos as well and the different topics that might interest you, including the best spiritual books and many others, and be inspired in your faith. If you haven't been here before, my name is Brian Mercier. I'm the founder and president of Catholic Truth, an organization dedicated to helping Catholics to know their faith, love their faith, and live their faith with passion and purpose every day, setting them on fire. That's what we're about here at Catholic Truth. And in this video, we're giving my favorite history books that you could read to learn more about Catholic history. And if you didn't know this about me, a little tidbit, I have a master's in theology and I have a concentration in science and religion and I have my master's in church history. The first one is my favorite, favorite, favorite history book set is The History of Christendom by Warren H. Carroll. This is a six volume history book set. It's no joke. Some of them are up to six to 800 pages each, and I eat it up. I love it. Church history is just so fascinating. If you want the full, unabridged version of Catholic church history and history of Christianity in general over the last 2,000 years, this is your set. It follows the papacy from Peter onward, and it follows a lot of the Catholic history, like the Reformation, the separation of the Orthodox from the church in 1054 AD, the Crusades in great detail, the Inquisition, and many, many other things. It's fascinating. History of Christendom, Warren H. Carroll. If you would like a more concise history of the Catholic Church, I would recommend the book, A Concise History of the Catholic Church. This is still a pretty good read, but it's much more concise. It's all in one volume. And overall, this is a pretty good treatment of Catholic Church history. Once you get to about here in the book, the very modern days, it goes a little awry and a lot of the history is a little bit liberal and skewed, but overall it does a very good job of presenting church history that's fair and accurate. So it's Concise History of the Catholic Church. I recommend it. Another one of my favorite books is How the Catholic Church Built Western Civilization. This book is amazing. It's amazing. This book is so good. The back of the cover just says, go into any college campus, any college campus across the country and ask college students or teenagers in high school or pretty much anyone for that matter, what the Catholic Church is about. And they'll say the Crusades, the Inquisition, this and that, and all they do is pick the few negative things from church history, of which weren't always negative and they just don't understand in the first place, but they miss the overwhelming positive things that the Catholic Church has done and how the Catholic Church is responsible for creating Western civilization, forwarding science for over a thousand years during the Dark Ages, creating universities, creating many things like law and economics and art and architecture and history and making the Bible. It's kind of a big deal. I mean, things that we don't even consider, that we take for granted in our society that the Catholic Church gave the world. Hospitals, orphanages, countless things that the Catholic Church has done. So I highly recommend this book. It's one of my favorites. One of my favorite books on the Protestant Reformation and Luther in general is called Luther, The Facts About Luther. This book was eye-opening, mind-boggling, and even I was taught things I did not know. Many things I did not know about the life of Luther. It just taught me what kind of a man he was. Had good intentions to reform the church, but he wasn't the right man to do it. He was angry. He had a violent temper. He drank. He cursed like a sailor. And he was just a mean man if you got on his wrong side. So when he turned against the Pope and the church, he did s some shocking things, including making pornography of the popes with the priests and all these other things that are not becoming for a Christian to even think about much less put down on paper. And there are many quotes in this book by Luther that would shock you and that 
makes people wonder why they would even follow a man like Luther or Protestantism in general. I mean, his sanity seems so-so sometimes. He questions whether he even loved God. He questions whether when he sees God, it's actually the devil. And by the end of his life, he was questioning his whole entire Protestant Reformation, and the devil was jumping down his throat, showing him that he caused all the division in the church. It's a fantastic read. I blew through this book, underlined everything in it. And if you want to know more about the Reformation, Luther, indulgences, everything in general, check out this book, The Facts About Luther. Many people always tell me that the Catholic Church was started by Constantine, that the Catholic Church was this, that the Catholic Church was that, the Catholic Church adopted pagan customs and rituals and teachings. All of that is fake news. It's false. And if anyone had read the writings of the earliest Christians, they would know that they had a continuity of the belief and they did not corrupt or compromise the teachings that came down to us from Christ. So this is another great history book set that I have, and it's a three-volume work. It's called The Faith of the Early Fathers, and it's three volumes going through the writings of the earliest Christians for the first four to five hundred years on all different topics like being born again, Peter being the rock, the Eucharist, baptism, and many, many other things that the earliest Christians all believed. Everyone says they're part of the earliest church, but no one's read the writings. Read the writings. They were Catholic. It's all here in black and white, and it's very, very interesting. Speaking of which, J.N.D. Kelly is a Protestant scholar, and he actually has a history book called The Early Christian Doctrines, where he too goes through all the earliest Christian writings. I honestly have no idea how this man is still a Protestant, because he verifies all of the things that Catholics claim about Peter being the rock, and the Pope, and the bishops, and the altar of sacrifice, and the Eucharist, and all of these other things that the Catholic Church believes. He's going through and showing the earliest Christian doctrines and what they believed. So if you're interested, it's more of a uh, thick work, but it's very interesting. I love this book. It's called The Decline and Fall of the Catholic Church in America. It is a big work, and it talks about where all the problems came from, how our Catholic Church has died because it was hijacked by liberals, by modernists, by people who wanted to take it over by changing the school systems, colleges, universities, seminaries, and all of the players, all of the people who are responsible for hijacking the church. Many people point to the Catholic Church and say, look, the Catholic Church is corrupt. Look at all the way they act. No, it was not the Catholic Church that taught this. If you don't like the corruption, and the things going on, that's not the Catholic Church. Those are the people who hijacked it, who took it over, and who tried to change it from within and teach things that aren't Catholic and make it into a different church altogether. Real Catholics follow Christ and don't do those things. So this is a great expose of how we got to where we are and possibly how to fix it. You know the Catholic Church persecuted and killed everybody throughout the Dark Ages, which was why they were called the Dark Ages, because the Catholic Church refused to let people learn. They refused to let them be educated. Education, scientific growth, um, progress as a whole, it was all stunted because of the Catholic Church. Oh wait, that's a lie. Two books I recommend on this. One, Bearing False Witness, Debunking Centuries of Anti-Catholic History, Lies, and Propaganda. I highly recommend it. It's long, but it's good. Also, those terrible Middle Ages, the Dark Ages, she goes through and debunks the myths of the Dark Ages, even the fact that the Catholic Church was against women. There's a whole chapter about how the Catholic Church actually allowed women to vote, allowed them to own land in a world that didn't allow that sort of thing, and it debunks many of the myths that people believe about the Catholic Church. A great book on the Crusades is God's Battalions. It gives what the Crusades were about and why they were wars of self-defense and all the things that you would need to know to overcome the myths that everybody gives about the Crusades. Same thing with the Inquisition. This is a book on the Inquisition, and it's called The Spanish Inquisition, A Historical Revision. Why is it being revised? Because scholars have found documents, especially in the Vatican archives, the secret archives that have been opened to historians and scholars and such, and they found that the Inquisitions were well documented. 
impeccably documented to show what they did, how they did it. And it undoes centuries of Protestant lies and Protestant myths against the Catholic Church and the Inquisitions, that they were just these torture devices that killed and tortured everyone who disagreed with them so that they could have their power. Those are all lies. And you can read about it in this book. Now, this is a long history book on it. There are simpler versions that all say the same thing. But the bottom line is that most everything that Protestants say, atheists and people who attack the Catholic Church, they're lies. And the, the funny hypocrisy is that Protestants have started this since Luther. They were attacking the Inquisitions, and they themselves had Inquisitions. I don't know if you know that, but Protestants had their own Inquisitions. The Catholic churches were far more fair and rational than the Protestant ones and the secular ones as well. A very interesting book. It's very thin, easy to read. It's an encyclopedia of heresies and heretics. All the players, all the names, what they are, how to keep uh, a hold of them all and keep them organized. This is a good book. I recommend it if that's what you're interested in, learning more about. And finally, OSV Encyclopedia of Catholic History Revised. It's a big encyclopedia, but it has everything in there. You want to know just a short clip of what the Crusades were about? Look it up in here. You want a short understanding of what the papacy is about, or the Inquisition, or the Galileo, or what the early church believed, or many, many, many things throughout history? This is only a paragraph to a page each of what you would want to know on these subjects. So I use this all the time for different reference material, source material, and I have many other encyclopedias as well, but this one's a very good one. It's by uh, Matthew Bunsen, who's a Catholic historian. I highly recommend it. These are some of my favorite historical books in the Catholic Church. I have shelves of history books on the Catholic Church, but these are some of my favorites, including How the Catholic Church Built Western Civilization and Warren Carroll's six-volume history set of the Catholic Church. Those are two of my favorite. Make sure, if you like this, to subscribe to our channel and to check out our other video recommendations on different topics, spirituality, apologetics, and see what books that we recommend for you. Please like this video. Please share it with others. Put a comment down. Let me know what your favorite history books are and what you thought of these history books. If you've read any of them, if you haven't, let me know what your thoughts are. And as always, please support our ministry. I will be praying for you. Please pray for me. God bless you. <music>